Hello, one, two. Um, we are going to sing together. Those of you who are outside, it's time to begin. We're going to start with uh, 574. In 574. More secure is no one ever than the loved ones of the Savior. Not your star on high abiding, nor the bird in homeless hiding. God is on that dead and no wish, and his holy cause a flourish. Like a father can he spares them, and his loving arms he bears them. The life no death can ever from the land. For his love and deep compassion comforts them in tribulations. Joy then yield thee, Jacob's God will ever shield thee. Where secure with this defender, at his will all for surrender. What he takes or what he gives us shows the Father's love so precious. We may trust his purpose wholly. This is children's worth for solely. Children of the heaven father, safely in his bosom gather. Free from scares that of distress us, he will love and he will bless us. Okay. Okay, the next one is 421. Oh, yeah, 421. <laughs> Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Let me more of the beauty see, wonderful words of life, words of life and beauty, teach me faith and duty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ the blessed one gives to all wonderful words of life. Saying a list to me loving call, wonderful words of life. 
are so freely given who we us to heaven beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life sweetly echo the gospel call wonderful words of life offer pardon and peace to all wonderful words of life jesus only savior sanctify forever beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life beautiful words wonderful words wonderful words of life we don't have prayer sheets today, so I, we're just going to kind of wing it as we go along. Plus, since our psalm is so long, that's probably going to drag on for a while anyway. Um, before we get started, last Sunday, I think it was Sunday night, we kind of blew it. We were supposed to ask if there was any blessings or testimonies, and we didn't. So tonight, I'm going to ask, are there any blessings and testimonies that you would like to share with us? Anyone? Anyone at all? Anyone? I'm looking. Going once. Yes, Mr. Seth. Yes, thank you for that. Absolutely. I can totally relate. I can totally relate. Anyone else? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Rod. Super, super. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, Seth. I, I enjoyed uh, hearing uh, Pastor Ben this evening as well. I think it was a great message and I was very excited to get it. So it was just kind of an intro of the Lord with uh, receiving things from God and then turning around and giving them to the ministers. So it was a blessing. And uh, thank you guys for that. I think it all deserves a blessing. You did? Yeah, you were right. It was great. It was a blessing to me. And I think to myself, okay, what am I supposed to give away now? <laughs> you know, Lord willing, it'll be something he wants me to do, right? Yeah, I had a, a real good blessing the last few weeks. I had a couple of projects I had to do, and I was real intimidated to do them because I uh, hadn't done them before I had, but they were, they were not successful. Let's just say that. And this time, and, and really, and I thank Dan because I came here and helped him with a couple of those projects, and it helped me a lot. So when I went out to do this, I was so intimidated, and I said, Lord, I can't do it. I know I can't. I, I, have, I, have, a, I have the skill set to do it, but I don't know how to do it, and do it right anyway. And it doesn't really matter what it was, but the Lord listened, and he definitely helped me and got through them. And both those projects came out just 
perfect. I mean, not really perfect, but I mean, really good. I'm so happy, you know what I mean? And then I had another project, and I couldn't believe how easy it went. I went and volunteered for this project, and then I got to start thinking to myself, oh, no, now what did I do? And I, it was so, I had a blessing, and I prayed about it, and the Lord helped me, and I got done the project in two hours. So I was so grateful for that. What a great week, great victory there, right? So I was blessed that way. So thank you. Anyone else before we go on? Anyone? Yes, Dan. Ah, amen. <laughs> Super. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? It's fun getting old, by the way, young men. It's fun. You wait and see. Lord willing, you get to get old, right? Um, well, thank you for that. That's a blessing for sure. <laughs> Look at Lydia back there. His eyes are all light up. <laughs> Uh, might not get old. Yeah, you might not. I hate to tell you this, but it's possible. Uh-huh. I am thankful. Uh, Roxanne's been sharing me some of the um, some of the fa- the posts on our Facebook or whatever from from uh, Pastor and Amy. So it's pretty neat to see that some of the areas they're getting seen and what they're doing. So I'm glad to see everything's going well for them. What a blessing it is. I already look forward to coming back. Um, and so uh, with that, I think uh, the announcements that I have. I mean, you're all aware that uh, Sunday na- Sunday afternoon is our anniversary and birthday fellowship yes so if you're planning on coming and bringing something please do and then um, no Sunday evening service as usual and then what else is there anything else that I am supposed to say Ron let me think next Wednesday we're doing 107 right we're doing 106 today and then 107 next week and then next Sunday, uh, yeah we're going to that's what you're, yes. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Oh, I forgot. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know what that, I'm hoping that they're all wrong. Lord, make it miss us. <laughs> You know, it is one of our spring snow storms that we're all so well used to, but Lord willing. Uh, don't, don't risk your lives if, you, if you're having trouble to get here or whatever, right? Take, you know, if you're not going to, if the snow weather really does get that bad, just stay home. God knows it. And so with that, I think that's all really that I have. I, I can't think of much else, right? If I do, I'll, I'll bring it up later. So uh, with that, we're gonna, we'll talk about our missionary of the week. Of course, is where Josh and Amy are tonight. Are uh, now are with the Parks is in uh, in. Um, I want to say the town though. It's what t- no, Toledo. That's right. I didn't want to think of Toledo, Ohio. Right. That's what I. But anyway, Larry and Jane Parks, uh, missionaries in Toledo, Spain. As we all know, that's where Josh and Amy are right now. We know that Evelyn is there. She's been there, what, a little over a month now? Six weeks almost? Is that right? Pretty close, yeah. They don't even know. They don't even miss her. What? <laughs> They're like shaking her shoulders. Who? Evelyn who? Anyway, so bless the Lord. Uh, I mean, praise the Lord that everything's going well there for them as well. So with that, I'll read their prayer letter. It says, since our return from our uh, time stateside, We have been actively making our transition into retirement. The Toledo Church is now in the hands of a capable national pastor. Presently, we are continued to assist in evangelism and discipleship ministries in addition to biblical counseling. The seminary opened second semester with nearly 200 active students. Jane has passed most of the day today over to, to Christian, the head of the studies, who will be taking over as director at the end of this term. There were three classes during the week on discipleship, culture, and historical awareness. The assignments and activities include research, developing materials for use in the church, teaching piano and English, conversation, as well as taking parts in regular activities of the church, such as special music, Sunday school, youth activities, and ladies' events. Um, I can't read Spanish. There's something in here, 2024. Um, 
Our uh, churches, groups, and individuals signed up from 22 different nations for this online Hispanic Ladies Bible Conference to lift up Christ in celebration of the International Day of Women. The response to the message of confident hope was heard by literally thousands. Our, uh, <clears throat> our RECADGCO team, I don't know, of two has once again been expanded to a total of 10 volunteers to encourage women to find rejoice in the Lord. R-E-G-O-C-I-J-O. Rejoice. So, you can laugh. That's what I'm like. It's like, oh, you laugh at me all you want. 2021. It must be, um, obviously, it's in Spanish, so I'm not sure what it means. We hope in you. We hope in you? Yeah, yeah I think Lord, that's. We hope in you. Lord. And that's probably where it says it down here is where they are women. Uh, different nations. Ladies Bible Conference, Lift of Christ Celebration. Team once again expanded. Well, let's, yeah, yeah encourage we women. Hope in you. Yeah, we hope in you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, and it says here, pre, uh, please join us in praise to our Lord for new beginnings, knowing that to this time the Lord has brought us, and in him we rejoice and hope for the future. Please join us in prayer to the Lord for, number one, the, for the ongoing ministry of that word. We ask for wisdom to encourage those who write. We ask for direction as we begin the mammoth task for uh, <clears throat> Recog Geo in 2025. For direction in the life of Evelyn Hahn, the missions intern, as she returns to college and prepares for life of service. May she find her time with us in enriching and inspiring to attempt great things through God who enables and gives direction to find his perfect will. Three, for the seminary as it continues to update his paperwork and re... <clears throat> its paperwork, and revitalize its programming. Pray for men and women to prepare for ministry. The need is great. And finally, for God to give us grace, balance, and wisdom for successful new beginnings. Servants, by his grace, Larry and Jane Parks of Spain. So with that, I will pass this around. And then, as we normally do, we uh, will pray for the Parkses. Is there anyone, can anyone want to start? Can I have anyone to volunteer to start? Dan, thank you. Anyone else would like to follow up with Dan? If, if so, please follow up after Dan speaks, and then I'll finish this off. Thank you.
Heavenly Father, as we come before you and thank you for the Parkses and for their many years of service, Lord, uh, as they go into retirement, we do pray for their health. Lord, as I've heard reports that Larry's health is slowly fading, and Lord, uh, you, you are the great physician, and you are in control, and you know uh, um, them very well. And Lord, we just pray that you would uh, encourage them and lift them up at this transition phase, that they may stay busy for you till the day they see you and stand before you and you tell them to enter in my faithful servants. Lord, we're so thankful for the ministry there, for the national pastor that they, you brought to them to continue on the work at the Toledo Church. May it continue and be blessed by you. May we hear in the future of many Spaniards coming to know you, Lord, because of the work that was started there and continues there. Lord, as we think of this uh, ministry that they have and um, with the ladies, May this uh, flourish and um, bring forth m much fruit, Lord, as these ladies get together and uh, learn more about you and serve you. And, Lord, may it be a blessing this year as well as the plans they have for it next year. And, Lord, for their seminary, may that be blessed and may it be continued. And may it be, um, may it be uh, glorifying to you, Lord God, what it can do there in a little, actually a very large town in Spain. So, Lord... As uh, we are heard already, and we're, we're just blessed uh, the time that Evelyn had there and the things that she has learned, and we look forward to seeing her report when she comes back. And, uh, Lord, please just give them safety uh, as they're there, these, these remaining uh, week that they're there, and safety on the way home again. And we certainly do, as a family, church family, look forward to uh, seeing them again, do love them, and do care very much about them. So, Lord, uh, may they be... Um, truly blessed by you, and may we be blessed by them, and, and uh, as their work uh, there in Spain is uh, fruitful, we pray. And now, just as we start this uh, study tonight, would you be with me and be with us as we look into your word, and may it work in us uh, richly, and may we be grateful for the, your word and for what you do for us, and we ask all these things in Jesus, our Savior's name, amen. Okay. How come the last two times that um, pastor's ass gone and I had to do this. I get a psalm that's got 48 verses in it. <laughs> it's like, why can't I get one with eight? You know, it's like, no, I get one with 46. But you know what a blessing it was this past week that I uh, worked on this? And um, so I'm going to do something a little different than uh, um, pastor starts out. I usually get some volunteers. This I'm going to try something totally different. I'm going to actually have it read to us. See if it works. I want to see if it works. It should work. Um, I do like this uh, little app that I got. Um, it works really kind of nif nifty. If, of course, if it wants to open up. Go to my music. Hey, aren't you not going to work for me? <laughs> there it is. Yay. All right. Psalms. We are in 106 and verse 1. And let's see, and it's 48 verses. So I am going to see if we can all hear this guy. All right? I can turn it up a little. Let's find out. Let's see. Psalm 106. Praise ye the Lord, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can shew forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O oh, visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up, so he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. 
and the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then believed they his words, they sang his praise. They soon forgot his works, they waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp and Aaron the saint of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Yea, they despised the pleasant land, they believed not his word, but murmured in their tents, and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations, and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phinehas, and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. And that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen, and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance." And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered for them his covenant, and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captives. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. That's a handy little laugh, isn't it? <laughs> I really do like it. Uh, okay, since we got through the first phase, um, anyone know the author of that one? Don't know. Don't know, yeah, it says it's unknown. But um, what's interesting, my pastor left me his notes. <laughs> uh, he, did, he did say, if you, it's interesting, if you went to uh, First Chronicles, uh, chapter 16 and verses 8 through 12, you'd see David almost repeating these same words. So there's a good indication that this was written by David. I mean, they don't know for sure, but like I said, because it's been, pr pr I mean, the words were once already printed in First Chronicles, it looks like it's something that David could have done. Um, how about the occasion? Anyone got any idea about the occasion of this? <laughs> yes, sir. I, I feel like it might be the song that David delivered to Asaph when he brought out the heart of the Lord. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that is one of the one of the one of the thoughts. Anyway, uh, another one was another one was was it obviously <clears throat> was it during that exile when they were exiled as well, right? Um, what uh, Pastor Ed wrote here is that uh, again. 
it's unknown, but Spurgeon points out the similarities between this and David's psalm. Um, and for what I just mentioned before, as far as him being the author, and then what happened in that uh, First Chronicles 16. So that was exactly what you were saying about that when they were bringing out the, the um, <clears throat> ark. So um, key words. Any key words in there? Yes, yes. No, that's true. I, absolutely. Okay, Ben. Polluted. Yes, polluted's in there for sure. Anyone else? Yes, Zach. Super. I like when people have other things like, yeah, you see it differently. Yes, Julie. Yep, I have provoked myself. Yeah. Yeah, I had praise as well. That was one you see a lot in there. Five times I counted praise in there, right? I think that's, in fact, that's what Pastor had on here. His key words he wrote was provoke. Yes, Dan? Yeah, lots of that, huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. You see a lot of that in this, isn't it? You know, as we get through this, as I go through this, I know this is always Psalms that's always written about the, what? tribes of Israel. It's all about the actions and things that happen in the history of Israel. But I always put this in perspective. How do I relate to this, right? And it's so interesting how much I can say, boy, I'm just like that. I did exactly that. Talk about rebellion, right? At some point, you could be walking perfectly with God, and the next thing you know, like, you know, Seth said is that he got convicted of this thing, and God had to take it away, you know. It's not exactly, I'm, I want to get rid of it, but it's not exactly how I wanted to do it. You know, and so when I look at Psalms and I read them, I'm not good at poetry. I'm really terrible at it. I'm trying to understand it. Um, but when I read and I, you know, always the verse hits the head. That's why he always has a memory verse. And there's always a verse that says, that's a good verse for me. That's what I need to remember. Um, I always look at it as a, is this how God is also still dealing with us? And my, for me, it might not be what it is for you, but for me, I said, yeah, God still deals with us because we're his people too, right? So when I look at Psalms, I always think of that. How is this relating to me? And that's when I get to my outline. You'll see how I feel that is how it relates to me. Okay, so definitely. Any others? Anyone else see anything else? Pastor had provoked on there. Mercy, save. You know, those are the kind of the repeated words. Uh, he, he put uh, words of note. A leanness. You know, unadvisedly and mingled. And then he also put in here negative and judgment words. Wrath, anger. Hate it, destroy, right? So we definitely see <clears throat> in this psalm, right, we, we know that uh, as we get through it, you'll see, and especially pastor's notes, which helped a lot, you're going to just see the historicness of what happened to the people of Israel. Okay, so uh, we should read it again, as we normally do, and this time, instead of me playing it, uh, can we split it up? Can I get three people to read today, verses 1 through 16? Then 17 through 32, and then 33 through 48. Julie, yay, first one, 1 through 16. How about Dan, next one, 17 through 32. And then last one, anyone, 33, and, oh, thank you, Seth. And why don't you do that? Okay. 1 through 16. Okay. Praise ye the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thy inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have con committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, 
that he might make his mighty power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up. So he had led them through the depths as through the wilderness, and he saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then believed his words. They sang his praise. They soon forget his works. That waited not, they waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp, and Aaron, the saint of the Lord. swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forget God, their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Yea, they despised the pleasant land. They believed not his word, but murmured in their tents and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to throw them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phineas and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. And that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes. Because they provoked his spirit so that he spake in it unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus they were defiled with their own works and went to whoring with their own inventions, Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them. They were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. And he remembered that for them his covenant, and repented according to the multitude of his mercies, and made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captives. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen, and give thanks unto thy holy name, and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Amen is right. Okay. Um. It's a long psalm, isn't it? <laughs> uh, so with that, anyone got a theme? Anyone have a, a theme? What do you think we came up with there for a theme? Yes, sir. Seth. No. Yes, I like it. I'm very, very close to similar thing. Anyone else? Come on. Come on. Anyone else? Come on. <laughs> I can imagine. I, now I kind of know how a pastor is when he's up here and everyone's like, huh? Huh? Uh, 
I don't know, man. Yes, did you have one? Did you want to say something else? Oh, I thought you wrote your hand. I didn't go. Oh, I, uh, I learned the hard way. You don't do that. You get in trouble. Uh, okay, I, uh, my theme I said was man is sinful, yet God is merciful. You look at it throughout this whole history of this thing. Israel would turn their back on God. And, huh, and you know, when you read some of the evil things they did in here, I mean, think about it. Could you sacrifice your own child to a, a false god? It's mind-boggling, but yet that's what they did. They were sacrificing their own children, you know, to Baal Peor. I had to look that up. Baal Peor is an idol of Moab, you know, and I, I just and ate the sacrifices of the dead. I just can't even get my head around how evil it was, yet God was very patient. It's kind of like what I teach my Sunday school kids, right, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> You know, you can sin. It doesn't mean God's going to put the hammer down right now, right? He's not going to put the hammer down. He's got mercy. But it's not to say he couldn't, right? We read in here, you read about Dathan and Abiram, right? Now, Dathan, he pushed and pushed. I think God really did give him lots of time before he finds it's enough. And swall- you know, he's opened up the earth and swallowed the man whole because all he did was complain. But, you know, it's mentioned in here, which I love about this psalm, is so much history of Israel is being mentioned here. So Pastor had his theme was um, a telling of Israel's historic unfaithfulness, right? Pretty much what we got. And then another one he had was the actions of man and God's loving response, right? Man constantly wants to sin, and yet God is lovingly merciful and waits for us to repent. And a lot of times, in case you don't, what happens is we see what happened with Dathan. So that's what I was saying earlier, Ben, is that it doesn't always mean God's not going to punish you instantly. He could. He could. And we, we need, I think we need to make sure we keep that in mind when we think about what sin means to God. Okay, how about um, a tone? Anyone got a tone there? What do you think the tone was? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I do too. Angry. Yeah, angry. Yep, yep. No, he's not. Not at all. Anyone else? Anyone else got a tone? What do you think the tone was here? I, I had it anguish. They're, they're anguishing over their sin as well as, you know, mournful. I had mournful as well, and that's what actually, that's what Pastor had, what he had in there as well. So was there anything that you learned from this psalm? Is there anything that really stuck out to you? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right, I agree. And really, as a Christian, if you think of it as that, I'm nothing, and God's everything. You know, I really do believe we'll have, a, we'll have that perfect Christian life, right? But yet, in our own flesh, we, we, at least I know, I'll, I'll speak for myself, is that for years I suffered with that, right? It's going to be about me, and that's what we see here. And through this whole psalm, you see it's always Israel is about them. He gave them what? It says in here, the desires of their heart. Even though it was wrong. He said, I'm going to give it to you. Until you eat so much of it, you're going to, you're going to die, right? It's just it's amazing how much you want it so bad, you lust, you want it so bad, I'll give it to you. And what does it do? And in the end, what does it do? It brings death, you know, and it's just amazing to see that. I'm so grateful. We had a great God who loves us, right? He doesn't give up. Even in this psalm, you can see no matter how bad it got, he didn't give up. He still gives him a chance to turn back, and that's what's so wonderful. It's the same with us. That's how I said at the beginning, how, this relate, how does it relate to me? Well, that's just it right there. You know, my, you know, when I thought about it, it's that God is patient with me. He's been patient with me for 40 years. I got, this summer, I've been saved 40 years, and it always hasn't been a good walk, right? But God's been, I'm here today because God's been patient with me, right? He could have took my life, said it's enough, right? Yes, Julie.
Yes, I agree. Just like Israel. And I'm yeah. ready for the mm-hmm. 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 Idolatry Verse 37, yeah. Yea, they sacrifice their sons and their daughters unto devils. <laughs> their children. We can't get our head around it because today, modern day age, we don't, you, no one sacrifices kids. They don't even sacrifice animals anymore, right? But I mean, I guess there are some people that are um, to their false gods, but this is mind boggling when you think about it. You're right. It was that far gone. Yeah, it is amazing. Anyone else? Anyone else got anything that uh, want to anyone to share with what God's taught you with this psalm? I think uh, Pastor said uh, God showed such patience and mercy with Israel despite them giving him any reasons not to love him, many reasons not to love him, right? And then, uh, how might this psalm be helpful in your life? Yeah, amen. I'm very close to a similar thing. I wrote, I wrote, when we sin, we have a merciful God, right? No matter how far we go, God is always going to, that's what I love about revival. We didn't pray for that tonight, but revival is an amazing thing in my life. You know, if it wasn't for revival, like I said, I would not be here. If God had given up on me, I would be gone, and God didn't. And that's the hope we should all have, family members that are lost, right? Family members that are in trouble. You know, in a bad situation, we have a great God, and he hears our prayers, and we, and we ought to believe that, right? Okay, so with that, should I play it again? Uh, yes, Dan. Well, verse Sorry. Verse 43, it uh, reminds me to be sure that it's fair for others. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, amen. How many of testimonies you've heard of a grandmother praying for a grandson, right? Or a parent. <clears throat> I have a testimony of a guy I, I go and visit now and then out in Brookings. His father prayed for him for uh, many, many years. He was lost for many years. And he got saved in his early 20s and it's because his father had never given up praying for him. You know, I, I asked, matter of fact, this morning in my prayers, I said, Lord, I've been praying for almost 40 years for my family. And... Uh, only one brother confesses to be saved. I got six others, you know, 40 years. And I'm getting impatient, you know. Time's running out for my family, and so it's very nerve-wracking, right? But there you go. You said it. That's why we got to pray for others as well. Um, so I was going to say, anyone else want to add on that at all? Okay. Do we want to read it again, or would you like me to just to play it on here again? Let's do it again. Okay. I'm going to play it on here one more time. Um, I do just talk this out again. We'll, do it, we'll re- go through it one more time. It is a long psalm, right? Psalm 106. Praise ye the Lord. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can shew forth all his praise? Blessed are they that keep judgment, and he that doeth righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. O visit me with thy salvation, that I may see the good of thy chosen, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers understood not thy wonders in Egypt. They remembered not the multitude of thy mercies, but provoked him at the sea, even at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his mighty power to be known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it was dried up, so he led them through the depths as through the wilderness. And he saved them from the hand of him that hated them, and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. And the waters covered their enemies. There was not one of them left. Then believed they his words. They sang his praise. They soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. They envied Moses also in the camp and Aaron, the saint of the Lord. The earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. And a fire was kindled in their company. The flame burned up the wicked. 
They made a calf in Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they changed their glory into the similitude of an ox that eateth grass. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, and terrible things by the Red Sea. Therefore he said that he would destroy them, had not Moses his chosen stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath, lest he should destroy them. Yea, they despised the pleasant land, they believed not his word, but murmured in their tents, and hearkened not unto the voice of the Lord. Therefore he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations, and to scatter them in the lands. They joined themselves also unto Baal Peor, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions, and the plague break in upon them. Then stood up Phinehas, and executed judgment, and so the plague was stayed. And that was counted unto him for righteousness unto all generations forevermore. They angered him also at the waters of strife, so that it went ill with Moses for their sakes, because they provoked his spirit, so that he spake unadvisedly with his lips. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen, and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, insomuch that he abhorred his own inheritance. And he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times did he deliver them, but they provoked him with their counsel, and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and he remembered for them his covenant, and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them also to be pitied of all those that carried them captives. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the heathen to give thanks unto thy holy name and to triumph in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Ah, we like that after. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Um, so we're now we're getting to that tough one, huh? The tough part. The outline. Anyone want to take a stab at it? Okay, Rod, go. Yeah, thank you, sir. Very good. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else want to join in? Is that your hand, Jacob? <laughs> I am going to, before I read mine, uh, uh, Pastor had two outlines. Uh, first, A says, the telling of Israel's historic unfaithfulness, prologue 1 through 6. Unfaithfulness in Egypt and the Red Sea, 7 through 12. Unfaithfulness before Kadesh Barnea. 13 through 22, unfaithfulness after Kadesh Barnea, 23 through 33, and then finally, unfaithfulness in the land, 34 to 46. Oh, and then finally, I'm sorry, the epilogue, 47 through 48. And then he had the actions, B, he said, the actions of man and God's loving response. One, they forget, and then he saved, 1 through 12. Two, they lusted, and he provided, 13 through 22. Three, they provoked, and he forgave, 23 through 43. And then for, finally, a lesson to learn about God's faithfulness, 44 through 48. Pretty good, actually. Like I said at the beginning, I always kind of, how is this relating to me or Christians today? When we look at it, and I, I put down uh, one through six, Christians or we are blessed people. Uh, 7 through 12, even though we forget God's mercy and still sin, he continued to deliver us. 13 through 23, 
Sin has serious consequences. 24 through 33, we are a rebellious people. 34 through 43, the ways of the world only brings bondage. And then 44 through 47, God takes pity on his people. And then 48, let us praise the Lord for his mercy. Anyone else want to fit in the outline? Anyone at all? Ah, what's wrong, Lydia? She's shaking her head. Don't. <laughs> all right. Hey, that's a lot. That I spend a lot of time on this, and I still struggle with it. I'm just not good at poetry and stuff, but it's so much, so much information here. And just small verses kept popping out at me all the time. That's where we get to a memory verse. What verse would be a good one to memorize? Uh, I took verse 1. I just thought verse 1 was a good one. Yeah. Yeah, his mercies endure forever. I want to always remember that. His mercy will endure forever. A pastor put memory verse. He put 2. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth all his praise? 47. Yeah, I've had that one underlined for a long time. Yeah. Anyone else? Anyone else got this? Yes, Seth. Verse 44, nevertheless, in your love and goodness, Yeah, it's another one I've had underlined in my Bible for a long time. I've been in this psalm more than once, and it's pretty interesting. You can go back and read over it again. I was reading over this. Does anyone know who Phinehas was? Phinehas? Yes, Seth. Tribe was, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? So I'll go a little deeper. Any any significance of this? Number one, he was a high priest, right? Obviously, he was a high priest at the time. Uh, Ah, Sarah just knows the answer, don't you? You know the answer. This is like a quiz. This is one of the pastor's quiz questions, you know. Sarah's looking at me. I know the answer, but I'm not going to say it. Um, it, it was interesting. He's the son of Eliezer, I believe, who is the son of Aaron. So he's a grandson of Aaron. So the priesthood kept, you know, going down. And he was doing right. He was doing right. He wasn't like a lot of the priests that went, you know, and started doing the wrong thing, but he was doing right. And that's why it says here the plague was stayed because of his intercession for the people. I just find stuff like that very interesting, you know, very good. Um, okay, any, any other things you want to bring up about Psalms 106? Very nice. <laughs> he really left me good, didn't he? That's okay. I'm, I'm glad he left me a notes. It helps, but also I, I like going through it. It, it is a lot. Um, Terry's out, so we don't have a prayer sheet tonight, but that doesn't mean we can't, it's only a little after seven, that we 